So you're going to see a lot of people regretting buying Lord of the Rings. There is actually a big mathematical problem, which I can show you with this collector's edition. It's selling for $470 a box. And the value, the expected value, unless you pull a serialized ring, which again is very hard to do, is almost, uh, it's very low. I think the expected value is like $200 less than half way way less than half actually now that i'm looking at the cards and if every pack is one of the exercises i do is i say to myself like dominator united okay what is the big chase it's cedrid she's 90 dollars. okay so if i buy a six dollar draft pack from walmart i can multiply i can 15x my investment if i get really really lucky and then I look at cards that I can break even on. What cards are actually more than $6 retail? How many of them are, exist? Are they rares and or mythics? And then you can calculate the expected EV. So when I was calculating the expected EV of the Lord of the Ring set, and the reason that we're looking at this secret lair, this secret lair is offensive to me. It is four commons or uncommons. I just know that they're not very valuable cards being sold to you for $30 with a little bit different artwork none of these cards are really all that good on top of that they're just filler cards and yeah so back to the initial my initial assessment of what's going on here this is pretty bad uh Tolarian community college was re referencing that guy who spent eleven thousand dollars and now instantly regrets it if you are not having fun opening the packs, there is no there's no reason to do so. It's $470 a box, my dudes. Almost $40 a pack loose. This is on what not they're selling for $50 to $60 a pack, depending on quote the bounty. Right? The the super realistic bounty that I'm sure that you can get of one of these serialized rings. This is basically a nightmare so how can i explain this from a gambling addict's perspective it's big high risk high reward you either make you either pull serial ring or you pull nothing there are just no cards in this set that really justify the price point of 470 dollars plus there are no cards that you can pull so like an exercise i could pull uh, for Commander Legends, I can say, okay, all five dragons. So you can get a draft pack for five bucks, five, six bucks. You can get a set pack for seven, eight, or maybe maybe seven. Yeah, maybe six and seven. There's not that much difference between set and draft. Okay, Dungeons and Dragons, Commander Legends. Okay, what cards can I break even? What commons and uncommons are worth more than a dollar that really help me get to the value that I need to be at? And even to um, the obvious point, I mean, there's something super obvious here that I think uh, most people miss. Is Are there any rare cards or <laughs> mythic cards I can break even on? And for any set, like uh, I take uh, Dominator United, you got a Chase in Cedra. That is a big, big boy or big girl. I think Cedra may be female or non-binary. So I don't want to throw that out there so I don't get canceled. Uh, Shedrid is a $90 card when I was paying $6 a pack. Yeah, it feels really good when you hit a $90 card, guys. Like, it's, you know, it feels the best. You got Lily, you got that Lotus. I mean, you have a few cards that you are actually chase cards that would 15x, 10x, 20, or 5x your value. Then I look at cards where I would break even. So, okay, this is a list of cards that are $6. And I look at Card Kingdom or above... And when I look at this set, outside of the one ring and its multiple, multiple versions, there are no other cards above $40 that you can break even retail. And we're talking about retail. You, then you have to sell it. You have to be the lowest seller. You have to compete against everyone else with their hundreds of copies of the ring. This is not a good set if you actually like expected value. This expected value set is incredibly low. So here we have $63, $39, that might be damaged, but you can see like $50. So if we're going to buy a pack for $40, and that would be very generous. No one would probably sell a loose pack for $40. They'd probably sell it for 
If we were to buy a pack or a loose pack of fifty dollars, right? Actually, we're gonna see the loose pack. You can see the little pack. You can see that the only free cards over the pack price is the one ring, which is a mythic. That is a very, very bad thing, guys. This is not where you want to be. So you can buy an individual pack for forty-six dollars and seventy cents. Uh, Lowe's listing. There is, outside of pulling the one ring, there is no other cards even close. I mean, you have the Orgus Bowmaster. I mean, it's about 27 bucks, Not bad for a, a rare. But then the next one is the Witch King at 15 bucks. So, I mean, what combination of cards? If, if your booster pack doesn't have the a one the ring in it, no combination of cards, even on commons and Naza and so on, can really help you get back to the $50 retail price point. None. And I think I find this very appalling, right? Because when I open packs, I know I'm going to take an L, but I'm expecting there to be at least the chance, like in Dominary Knight, the chance to hit a Shudrid and do well. So when you go to the casino, and, and then we're going to talk about what the chance is. It's the serialized cards. When you go to the casino and you gamble... There's got to be hope you can win money, okay? There can't be a zero possibility or a, a point oh 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 one possibility that you pull a ring and make money. None of these mythics are worth anything. Um, you have some uncommons, you know, the Nagura's uncommon is worth a lot because it's actually pretty good. Man, it, it's crazy. I think about this set, and this is a disaster to gamble on because there's no secondary hits. You either pull a serialized ring or you're effed for the box. And if you're buying a single pack, which is $50, 40 45 50 whatever you want to say it is, you're still effed because unless that pack has the one ring or Orgus Hunter, there's no way you could get back to retail. And that's retail. The buy list on this, I mean, I, I would imagine that 99% of packs don't get buy list. Even if you pull the ring, you're still going to have a really hard time buy listing. You got to pull two of those. Then you can finally buy list at 50% for break even. This is a really, really expensive product. It's a very addicting product. And you're not going to break even. You're not even, you're not going to lose 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. You might lose 60 or more percent on average based on the expected value. This is a terrible, if you cannot pull a ring, a serialized ring, and there's only a few of them, then the box is a dead box. It's ring or bust. And... I hate that in the set. I really, I, you know, I'm trying to open sets to encourage you guys that there are other sets out there that may be um, under undervalued, um, but are still really quality sets like Dominator United. I think is, a, I mean, I pulled a Shedra. That was a ninety dollar. The Shedra I pulled at the time I pulled it. I don't know what price it is right now. It was like basically two the one rings. Like, isn't that insanity, right? And that came from a draft Dominary United standard pack from Walmart. And yet, we're buying boxes for four... I mean, it's so gross, guys. It is so, so gross. Um, I can't really express my disappointment. But nonetheless, you know, pe people say, are we going to open? I think we got a choice we'd make. Uh, I think this tweet by Tolerian Community College really is something to reconsider. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, I am, I think this is much worse than Magic 30th. At least Magic 30th, you could break even by pulling a Black Lotus or Retro Black Lotus or any of the Moxes, Dual Lands, and so on. Here, I just don't think you can break even.